welcome everybody. Today is October 27th, 2015. The City Council is now in session and we apologize for running a little late but we had an executive session for some other business before the meeting and ran a little longer. The Common Council met September 22nd, 2015. Does anybody have any corrections or additions to the minutes as presented? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve them as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, the Board of Public Works and Safety met September 3rd and September 17th for normal business. Does anybody have any uh, questions about the uh, minutes, uh, what's been going on in the city? Leap pickup's a big thing right now. Recycling's going well. Trying to get some more trees down, we're working on that. Uh, the police and the fire will give their report too. Does anybody have any questions or anything? For middle school, we didn't do that good because uh, there was only a few that actually responded, and that's why we had we did come back and did some additional data collection again with the help of uh, the task force. Terry was kind enough to volunteer a couple of his uh, people, so um, there were. 37% were getting dropped off by parents, 59% by buses, and 5% were actually walking. Um, after this data collection, we did uh, try to prioritize the top five projects um, for the city that can be done um, around these three schools that can provide a better link and provide a safer environment for the kids to be walking and biking on. Um, the first project that we have identified is uh, actually, you sh uh, I think everybody should have a copy of the, of the maps. Those are the top five projects. Um, the first one is from um, um, Jefferson Street from 4th to 13th, um, and then 13th from Pontiac to Jefferson, and then on Pontiac from 13th to 15th. So that actually kind of connects middle school all the way to uh, to Riddle. And then second one that we identified was on 4th Street from Clay to Jefferson, and then on Fulton from 4th to 6th Street. Um, I think that takes you Terry, to the library, uh, right. which I believe is on Northwest Corner North Library on 5th Street. Yep. So that kind, of, that kind of connects, makes that connection with the school too. If uh, some of the after school activities are going on at the school, then kids can walk from, uh, from the school over to the library. Um, third one is uh, Lucas to Madison. Um, and I believe that was more because of the bus stops that are on 4th Street that we can probably take a a bigger group of kids and have them walk to at least to the bus stop so they can get picked up at the bus stop. Then fourth project that we have identified is on Franklin Avenue which would be uh, for Columbia Elementary School and that is um, connection between 12th and 15th Street. Uh, project number five is Main Street and it's got a bunch of spot improvements uh, at intersections with 4th, 8th, 9th, 12th, and 15th. And uh, some of this stuff will also have to be coordinated with NDOT because Main Street is still under um, Indiana Department of Transportation's uh, jurisdiction. Um, other than that, um, we got to finalize, the next step is to finalize this uh, master plan and submit it to NDOT and then actually when they have a call for project is what they call it when you actually um, they have the money available for some of these projects that you can start applying um, so having this document in place is a, is a big help and that you got over other communities um, that don't have a master plan uh, so i would think uh, some of these projects we also looked at because uh, in that um, Procedures are some, somewhere tedious, um, so we tried to look at where we had the most right away, 
that the city owns already and sidewalks for most of the part so then all you're doing is just making connections for the lack of the sidewalks and making it uh, ADA accessible which is the new buzzword these days so you got to make everything ADA compliant so this time that's all I have if you guys have any questions I will be more than happy to answer and if I can't answer I'll promise you I will find an answer for you and get back to you so based on that last statement areas with sidewalks were more likely to be addressed than areas without correct sidewalks correct because I think our first goal would be to get some of those projects done to show progress within that so the next time when you go for the next project it will be easier to get that funded if you have if you're already showing progress with some of these projects was, was 18th Street looked at at all it's it's, it's on, not going to a school right it's not part we have with this particular planning grant we have to be very specific on I mean we did look at 18th Street as an opportunity um, but when it boils down to we have a, a very specific radius around each one of the schools that we have to encompass for safe routes and we're not going to send K to 2 to 18th Street to walk home so with that particular building if we had middle school over there uh, it would have been a little bit higher on the like we really looked at Fort, State Road 14 as and the Learning Center and how we could and make the, a route out that direction because of the, the high school Pontiac. and middle school. Um, Pontiac, yeah, yeah From and on the south trying to connect So we did look at it. We just weren't able to figure out how to make the connection. Make that connection uh, on off of 18. So yes, we did. Um, it's just like I said, we're in dots are very specific with this particular project and this these planning documents and where we can focus. Am I correct? Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. I, just, I did learn something from all of those meetings. <laughs> I don't know if I should say this or not, but I mean, believe me, we're trying to spread from the schools out to cover as many bases as we can with NDOT's help. Because I mean, a lot of our right of way there is, is NDOT 14 in Maine. And then the south of 18 on South Maine, pretty bad in need of you know, sidewalk pedestrian improvements. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can get one of these grants started and fund some nice projects, then we get those doors open for the conversations with NDOT and then we, you know, yeah. call them to the carpet to see what they will do as a part in a partnership with us to make some improvements throughout, you know, the south end of town, especially Marty, mm -hmm. 18th and south end of Maine. And there are some other opportunities as just far as Just not for safe grants. routes necessarily, right? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the scoping meeting will also, I'm sorry. <clears throat> but the scoping meeting will also to talk about, like I know that you guys are working on these trails and um, mm -hmm. down further south on these trail. abandoned railroad stuff. And um, I think uh, some, some of the INDOT folks were trying to let us know that we should try to keep those two things separate. Because again, a path from down on the south side of town is not going to be a primary connection to a school. So the, we should more focus on the connecting the schools together somehow with the neighborhoods and more focus on that rather than... It's a good thing to show that you guys are ahead of the curve and thinking about all these other things too, but I think that's what they... They're going to stay much. within the program for right. others. Right. Like school. But it'll help us if we move forward Absolutely. with any other types of yes. grant opportunities outside of safe houses. <clears throat> this, this would definitely be a jumping point for us to show that progress. Any other questions? I don't know if we have any is, from the public. Is there any questions from the public? Um, I don't live up here, but my question is, so you're wanting to take and for 2% of the kids that go to school in one school, you're wanting to redo the sidewalks and install sidewalks 
at the taxpayer taxpayer's expense? Is this what I'm hearing or no? Well, well I don't know if you want to answer this. Not the idea would be to grow the two percent from two percent yes five percent or ten percent so we so 20 kids educate you're gonna provide security and make it an act part of an active way to get to school for as many kids as we will use it you know and then who else benefits these aren't just you know for on jefferson street fourth street fulton avenue um, fourth street on the east side of main street it's not just kids going to school that are going to use these, but this is the tool that we're using to help start some of the infrastructure redevelopment. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a way to get more sidewalks, more bang for the buck with federal state grant. We can't do that much out of our own taxpayer Correct. money, but if we qualify for this tax grant, it's a win-win for the taxpayers. So, but you got to get these sidewalk stuff and stuff done before you get the grant. No, no, no. 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 Okay. We're, we're planning the grant now to follow through to get the four hundred thousand dollar grant. The way I understand it. Right. So, yeah. This we is have just to bring some money. Right right okay. And, we yeah. apply for it. and then we would be able to apply for the the actual infrastructure yeah. grant, which is the larger, more doing this the actual work on the sidewalk. Now, um, in these surveys that you guys have done, um, is there any? That, like, how many parents say that they would send their school kid to school walking or riding their bicycles, providing these stipulations were in place? Yeah, I think there was a bigger number, a number. Mm -hmm. um, that were actually willing to do it once that safe environment is done for their kids to be walking. Yes. And not only that, we have a 30-year plan for American Disability Act that all cities have to have a plan to comply with their sidewalks. So. 30 years is a long time, but we got to move forward, and this is a tool that we can use to help us get more bang for the buck. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? How do we have the likelihood that the grant process in Indiana, what's the likelihood that Rochester would be chosen for grants such as these? Highly likely because we got the first grant. So I mean, the planning grants. If we didn't get the planning grant, we wouldn't be in the running for the final grant. So okay. hopefully, the, DLZ will. The, the key is the, the, having the plan and then having our match. Mm -hmm. And the match. And we should be successful. Council. The match would come from the city. Yes. It's ten percent, or is this twenty percent? Twenty percent. Any other questions? If not, Andy, do you have anything to comment? If I'll close the public hearing now. Unless there's any more, com any more comments over here. Okay, I'll, I'll close this public hearing. Thank you. Unless your partner wants to say anything back here. No, he's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't wear his TV face today. <laughs> thank you, Cussin. Yep, thank you. Okay, um, let's go back to another public hearing here. I'm going to open a public hearing on the property condemnation on 1430 Monroe Street. I believe this was uh, up for last time, Shana, but we didn't advertise it, so we are Correct. Um, here for the public here at this time. Casey, do you want to say anything on this? You want me to walk you through the packet? I emailed it to you all, and you also have hard copy in front of you. This is, uh, is anybody here for this property? Okay. Um, this has been going on for I don't know how long, but uh, why don't you give us the years. heads up? Pardon me? For me, two years. What? For me, two years. Okay, all right. But I don't know when it burned, but it's been up quite a while. But. Yeah. Just a brief history on it. I did give you the complete chronological order. Uh, Mr. Nelson is correct. Uh, Mr. Swafford actually owned it first. Um, and the first photos that you see at the very back of the packet are from 2013. That would be August 2013. Um, we had spoken to Mr. Swafford and he had put a sign out front for sale. Um, we had sent, nothing was done with property. In September 12th, we had sent the order to Mr. Swafford, um, basically instructing him that the home needed to be um, repaired or demoed, uh, which is our typical unsafe order to come and talk to the council and state his intentions. In the process, he um, sold it, and I'm not for sure when, what month did you? November, know? I think. November of 14? Um, I think. 
Yeah, that sounds right. 2014. 2014, you purchased it? 13, I think. I think it was 13. 13. Okay. Because it was right after the public hearing on the first unsafe notice. Um, okay. And then nothing was, you know, you can see the photos between June of 2014 versus um, 13 when it originally burned. Mr. Nelson came in and cleaned up a little bit and started boarding the windows up. We had spoken a couple times and then there was a delay in action. So the next unsafe order was um, issued in Mr. Nelson's name in December 2nd, 2014, just to get it on record. Uh, to get a timeline, definitive timeline, Mr. Nielsen has spoken to my office on and off um, a couple times. During the winter of 14 and into um, April of 15, there was a dumpster in the back. I know Mr. Nielsen worked on it a little bit here and there. Um, you can see the letter we had sent April 7th of 2015 based on the fact that the home had been stagnant for a while. There had been no work that was completed um, for a little while. and. Then in May, we had sent out a letter after a conversation and basically my office gave him 60 days. My conversation with Mr. Nelson was make it look like a house in the neighborhood on the exterior. Get the siding in, get the windows in, get the roof done, um, you know, button it up, make sure it's safe, and make sure it sits well within the aesthetic surroundings of the other homes. And I know there were some other things going on, but he believed that he could get that done in 60 days. And that was, you see the letter, um, May 22nd. The series of photos that you see from then on was from June um, and August. And basically in August, everything uh, went stationary. And again, in September, um, it wasn't, once August came through, it wasn't sighted. Um, the chimney had been taken out, but there was a hole still remaining in the, in the roof line. The windows, um, Unfortunately, on the one side, we're put back in without a permit, and you have to have a permit to put in windows. You don't have your time to talk. When there's a new header, and because if there's a bedroom in the second story, they have to actually be egress windows to allow safe access to get out. Um, in this particular case, these windows are not. Um, so that is kind of a separate conversation from this meeting tonight. But you can see the different things that Mr. Nelson has done. The original September 2nd order, and then photos uh, from October, um, which basically show you um, the same thing as what was September. So that would be chronological. Does this council have anything to say before public comment? So is all the trash cleaned up now around the house? Some of these pictures, I don't know if they were dated or not, but there was a lot of debris in the back. Were those old? Those were June 14, 2014. And so the pictures yeah. now, all that trash is pretty much picked up. So. For the most part, I believe really about all you can really see in the back would be along the deck. And a lot of it looks like building materials, okay. except for the spare tire that's sitting there. But most of it appears to be building materials. And is the roof on at this time, or are there still holes in the roof? There's still a hole where the chimney was, and Just there is. The chimney still you can see, still, yeah. yeah, you can still see the back where there's um, areas. Looks like the high peak has not been done. The shingles are still sitting there. Um, yeah, you can see that uh, one picture in the back here by the on the corner. There's it looks like there's uh, shingles right. missing. From I mean, in this case, I applaud Mr. Nielsen for putting private investment into the house to try to renovate it. Uh, unfortunately, we can't have a house sitting for two years with tarps. Does anybody have anything to say before I let uh, Mr. Uh, Nielsen or whoever wants to speak? I'd like to hear what he has to say. Okay, let's uh, open the public hearing up to the public. Um, anybody want to speak on this behalf, the property owner? Yeah. You can come up here if you'd like and introduce yourself for the record. Hello. <coughs> I assume you're Mr. Nielsen. Hello, I'm Doug Nielsen. Um, I did purchase it like in the later part of 13, and I didn't get any paperwork on it or anything till the following summer. Um, 
did what I possibly could to button it up that year. Um, um, the following year, I got on it and got a dumpster in there, cleaned the house up. All the yards been cleaned up. Um, put as many windows in as I could afford, and uh, with the help of my family and uh, what I could, I could do. Um, I thought I had everything going in the right direction. Um, the roof has been restored. All of it that leaks. Uh, the very top roof. Uh, I noticed that there is some shingles missing there on one corner of the roof, but it does not leak. I mean, it may look ugly, but it don't leak. And I really didn't want shingles on it. I was going to go with maybe a metal uh, last longer. So uh, I talked to her, and she said, as long as you get the outside done, I was pretty sure I could do it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, now at this very point, it's missing one window and a door and siding. And the hole in the chimney, um, I didn't know I need, needed to address that. She hadn't, hadn't brought it to my attention. Um, and I'm not looking for sympathy from the council or anyone else. Uh, um, last year I had my son die, $6,000 to bury him, and that was a chunk out of my pocket. And right after, uh, right before he died, I broke my neck. So you could see my expenses are definitely overweighing what I make, which is nothing, because I broke my neck and I can't work. Um, so I incorporated my family into the picture, and, and I get, get my brother as a backer, and I've only recently done this because I didn't want to ask anybody else for help. So I don't know what the leeway is, but I'm pretty sure I can do whatever you need to uh, get this resolved in a timely manner. I tried to do it on my own. I just obviously couldn't. <coughs> What do you predict if you could satisfy the um, neighbors to have it cited? To have it cited? I mean, if, what time frame could you have it cited well, if, if you cited it? I'm missing the front door, which is a 32 and it's hard to get. Uh, I could cite it in a day. Can I speak? Well, that's what you need to tell the council. When I could can you cite have it in cited? a day if I had the door to put in. Well, so. when, um, when can that be done? What's your news? My name is William Nielsen, I'm his brother. Um, he has asked me to help him invest into this property. Um, for fear of exactly why we're here, um, you guys condemning it, taking it, bulldozing the house, um, I've been leery of doing so. I wanted to come here myself and find out exactly what needs to be done, what I, I as an investor, um, need to make sure it gets done so that one I don't lose my investment and two we can satisfy you and get everything done in a timely manner that you guys are asking of. Um, now the funds are not an issue here as for with me. With him yes um, because of unemployment and his medical situation um, but I wanted to make sure that the house was not going to be condemned and you guys take my investment if I invest in with it. So as far as financially wise, um, that will be taken care of with no questions asked. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to lose my investment here. And so that's kind of why, you know, I'm sitting back waiting to see what you guys want to do. If you guys want, I mean... Well, I don't believe the city is in the business to condemn houses, but right. this is going on for a long time, and with the building <clears throat> inspector have notified you. My question is, to both of you, when can you give the proposal to the council to have it cited if we give you time? Can you have it cited in the next 30 days if we have another meeting? Yes. Or have it buttoned up, and then we can bring it back at the meeting and see how your progress is doing? I mean, yeah. that's something you need to give a proposal to the council, the way I feel, give us something that you're going to do in the next 30 days to not you, have you us condemn it. 
What's that? Do you need this in writing? Well, we need your word. We're, okay. we're here at a public okay. meeting right What's, now. Um, It'll be documented in our minutes. What, yeah. Huh? What do they want exactly want done with this chimney hole? Well, usually with a chimney, you fill in the rafters where you cut the chimney out. Well, it's on the overhang, so it's not, it doesn't leak inside. Well, you still fix the roof, you know, but I, I think the siding is the big thing and to close the windows up and get a front door on it. Well, like, I mean, we don't want children all, coming in the house and It's all hurt. closed in. It, it locks and you cannot get in the house. It has doors on it and there's a window on the, in the kitchen area there that's broke, but the window's still there and you can't get in. You know, they still lock and everything else. Um, as for the windows upstairs, I asked her about whether or not I was going to need any permits to clean this place up and get it, you know, roof it. And she said, no, that's just, you know, normal upkeep. So I didn't need it. Well, if you and remodel. And I called back later and said something yeah. about the electric. And they said, no, you'll have to get electric permits. And that's when they told me that I would have to get, a, you know, an electrical permit or right. from whatever I was doing. You don't need a permit to replace the windows the exact same size. And when you and I were talking, it was replacing what was there. So roof, siding, replacing the windows the exact same size do not require any type of permit. Now wow. taking the windows down a size, you have to create a new header. <coughs> and you also have to make sure that the egress from second story bedrooms, it meets the fire building code. Egress, what's that? It, how, how, how do you get out? And so in, in case they're trapped upstairs, they can use the window as an escape. There's four other windows in that upstairs. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's required a certain size. Oh, they are? I mean, the, all of them are original except for the two I put on one side. And that's a bathroom for one, and the other one's not a bedroom. It's just a walk, walkway. It's not a bedroom. And without the knowing the layout, regular windows. Yeah, I without see knowing that. the layout, we wouldn't know that. That's okay. why in the code, anytime you reduce okay. or enlarge a window size, you got to get that building permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, but as for the siding, it, um, yeah, I could probably get the, the that sided in a month, and I just got to get the the one window for the kitchen area. All the windows are in the back. You could. You could see it's ready for siding. Um, the front is essentially ready for siding, all but the front door. That siding's not really hard for them. So, do you think you can have it pretty much buttoned up by next meeting in 30 days to come back if we table this? I mean, I'm asking do, you. Do do we need any permits? Well, do what you have asking? to get a permit, which is just a normal building permit if you're going to get electric upgrade or change any of the structures when you do the plumbing on the inside of the house you're going to have to get a permit which is good for a year mm -hmm. so you'll have to work with the casey's department on that and she has to give you that information what you're going to do well, how, but, Casey, how long does it take to get these permits about 15 minutes about 15 minutes 30 days okay Pretty quick. i I would just uh, ask the council, uh, do we need to close the meeting before we talk about it, or can we talk about it first? Talk about it. I would suggest to the council to give them 30 days to invest and get it buttoned up in the siding to improve the neighborhood and appease the neighbors. In 30 days, we look at it again and see where you're at, and then we might condemn it if you don't stick to your word. Fair enough. That's what I would propose to the council. <laughs> But so in 30 days we want to see the siding up the door in and the window and the window closed. Closed. And closed. And closed now you're talking about just are you just siding the back and the, the front end or are you going to redo the whole house no just the back and the front mm -hmm. and lately the original <clears throat> the shakes siding inside um, is there a way i could get one of these packets you guys are I just so happen to make an extra copy. I mean, are you guys wanting all of the house? Because I, I'm thinking if you're going to re-side a house, you might as well do it all. Well, I would think you'd want to. Yeah. I mean, for your investment. For well, what? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you're wanting to fix this house up, maybe to sell it or rent it or whatever, or live in it. But um, I, I believe. What is the uh, stipulation side of the whole house? I mean, I don't know. I haven't been walking around the house to see. The way that the code, I mean, the way that your code addresses it is 
um, you know, making it basically making it similar to the houses around it. You know, you want to make it aesthetically similar to the neighborhood. Um, you know, obviously the tarps, and we had talked about that, you know, the tarps and the tie back and that type of thing is not aesthetically dissimilar to neighbor, you know, houses, especially in a school neighborhood. But in this case, you can only seal it for 90 days, and we had talked about that. That's part of the code. Um, so the boarding in the windows, that's why we had talked about the doors and the windows. You had to get those done. Um, the holes in the roof, you know, any type of disrepair in the room. Obviously, the house right now is structurally, um, you know, it, it's in a it's in a state right now where structurally you need to make sure the water stays out of it because there is so much fire and water damage. Any more damage to that home, and structurally, it won't be worth putting the investment into. So, and we had discussed that. Um, so as far as aesthetically, there is nothing in your code that says you can't side the back and the front and leave the shakes on the side. Does it actually fit the aesthetic portion of the neighborhood? Andy? <laughs> I don't, I don't think we'd have much of an unsafe building complaint if the sole issue was they didn't match. There aren't any other they, regulations. They didn't match before. <laughs> the front was well, white. The side in, was in, in my experience, by the time you tear off the shakes and match the shakes, you're probably going to be better off than putting, I would assume, bed vinyl well, there siding. There's white on siding on the front and brown all around the back. Yeah. But uh, by the time you try to restore and match some of those wood shakes, your labor is going to cost more than probably just putting new siding on if you look at the remodel part of it, but that's up to you guys. So the exact language, I'm sorry, Mark, I just found what I was looking for. The exact language is exterior improvements to make the building compatible in appearance with other buildings in the area. That, that's the exact language in the notes. So 30 days, we'll put it back on the agenda. In 30 days, we'll meet again on the uh, fourth. Uh, well, we're meeting on Wednesday for November, yes. so it'll be 29 days. Yep. Uh, in a Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's for the board of <coughs> works. Oh. Um, the fourth Tuesday in November is November 24th. Okay, so it'll be the fourth Tuesday in November. Right. Okay. We'll be okay. For, it was just the board works. So like and so, the council wants exactly. You want siding, just where it where it's gone. Basically make sure they're siding on some type of siding. Well, if you look at the picture, out. it's gotta be, the, the, have you rebuilt the whole back of the house yet? Yeah. So what are you gonna put on that? You just gonna leave it bare? I mean, you'd have to side it. Yeah. I mean, to me, as a contractor, you'd have to side it. I mean, I would think you'd wanna side it, you know? So I'd say side it. What about you? down the side I mean, where the windows have been repaired, what's your plan there? Where you got the OSB? Um, I I do actually have what I, the, the brown that I tore off the whole back, and I can piece in anything that's missing around the brown. It, and that could be done too. I mean, in, in good taste. If you got salvage the material, I did. Then stain it to match the uh, in time. You'd match the siding, I would think. I mean. So no bare wood. No bare no wood. Matter if it's you got it. Yeah. Shingle shake or siding. I mean, I don't think we can dictate what. If you want to patch the siding for remodeling, I think that would be fine as long as I think you it'd be 30 days would be stretching it to side a whole house. I think we can get it. I'm only start tonight, it would be going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only asking for 30 days. That, let's just see where you come in 30 days. Is that my motion? Uh, I would entertain a motion to give them 30 days to see where they're at. That's a motion to Siding two side it, no window, raw wood, and windows in it, door done, the front door closed up. So to table. Motion to table. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay, 30 days and we'll revisit it. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will close the public hearing now. Okay, officers, uh, chiefs. Uh, Butler, do you have a report? I do. I passed the report out to everyone for the month of September. Field fires, one in Newcastle. Trash fires, one in the city. Calls for smoke, one in Rochester Township. Mutual aids, one in Henry Township. Transformer fire, one in the city. Accidents, three in the city, two in Rochester Township. Rescue, one in Rochester Township. Medical assist, 13 in the city, six in Rochester Township. Drove the ambulance back to the hospital five times. 
had a CO check in the city, one in Rochester Township, was called for a gas leak in the city. Service calls, two in the city, one in Richland Township, canceled calls, one in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township, had a total of 40 calls, one drill, and we utilized the state's live burn trailer. Um, also, if I have everyone's attention, I'd like to note that last week, uh, October 22nd, uh, on State Road 32 in Boone County, Indiana, we had one of our volunteer firemen, uh, Craig Smith, uh, with a South Bend firefighter, Dare Eidler, who was uh, going to a meeting in Lebanon to look at their um, training facility that are being con that's being constructed there. Uh, we're in the runnings for a grant to, to have a similar facility uh, built here. Uh, witnessed an accident, a uh, head on collision where a lady uh, left center, hit a semi, the semi burst into flames. Uh, she uh, was forced off the road, uh, pinned in her vehicle. Craig Smith went to the truck driver, fortunately. Uh, he was able to get out of the, his, his semi uh, uninjured, and then Craig and the truck driver went to where uh, South Bend firefighter was. Uh, the woman was trapped in her car. Uh, from the force of the impact, or the, the front end was smashed back, the doors were inoperable, uh, her ankle was pinned uh, below the pedals, uh, they could feel heat and start to see smoke coming up underneath the fenders. They were able to uh, coax her into freeing her foot and they removed her through the sunroof moments before her car was fully engulfed. So wow. uh, they are being credited by the uh, Sheriff's Department in Boone County uh, for the, this, this, the life of uh, the woman that was trapped in the car. So, uh, it's, uh, and what kind of makes this ironic is uh, both of these firemen were a day late for the meeting that was scheduled, that was on Wednesday, and they left on Thursday. Um, it, but it's, it's, I've seen their notes, and that's what they had written down, so divine intervention, whatever, but they were at the right place at the right time for this lady, just happened to be the wrong place for the departments. But um, she's alive today because of the, their mistake, I guess. But. Uh, it just doesn't happen like that most of the time and I just thought I want to give credit to those two individuals for uh, taking their personal safety out of mind and jumping on the, the top of this car to pull her out as it was smoking. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chief Butler. Any questions? Chief Shots? For the month of September, we had 20 accidents. Three of those were personal injury. Uh, 132 warnings were issued, 54 total offenses, 45 case reports, 655 calls for service, 47 lockouts, five tow vehicles, and 13 people incarcerated. And then you have the list of crimes that individuals were lodged for by our officers. There's any questions about those? <coughs> yes, yeah. heroin. Heroin is here. We can't deny it. We're going to do our best to stop it or at least curb it. You guys talked about any of the Narcan training yet? Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, other notes our hiring process is going on right now. The 17th, we had our, our written and physical agility tests. Background investigations are due November 2nd, and we will proceed with uh, command staff interviews shortly after that with the hopes of getting them to the Board of Works by the end of November. I uh, think we had, I want to say, 16 people show up for testing. There were seven or eight that failed the test. Uh, one person could not take part in the physical agility test because we make have bring a doctor's waiver um, and to reduce our exposure to any liability by having them run a mile and a half and things like that. She she did not get hers, uh, therefore she couldn't take take part in the physical agility test. Uh, we're doing background investigations, I believe, on seven or eight people right now. <coughs> uh, Boo Fest is this Friday from 4 to 5 30. Is that right, Shada? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to have several officers come in to help. I'll be in to help. Uh, Chief Butler is going to bring the fire engine down to help uh, block off 9th and Main. We're going to block off Main from 9th to 6th? 5th. 5th, that's right. Um, that way we make sure everyone's safe. There are, there are going to be cars downtown uh, while Boo Fest is going on, so we're going to just try to minimize as much traffic. Obviously, we're not going to let traffic come in, uh, but the traffic that is there, uh, inevitably, there'll be cars leaving, so we'll get them out as safely as we can. Uh, we'll probably have someone at 6th Street to help kids cross because I believe the they're going to Beacon Correct. for the costume Correct. contest. So we'll have an officer posted there at 6th Street to help kids cross safely. Um, uh, last Thursday, I brought it up to the Board of Works to purchase another vehicle. I've been able to, to hang on to my money as long as I can this year. And we had an update to get another vehicle. We got a 2015 Charger. Uh, it was in stock down at Fletcher Chrysler. It was the, the cheapest quote that we got. Um, and I've already been down and picked it up. I'm already in the works to get it set up here within a couple of weeks, probably. Um, and then Officer Haney picks up his K9 on Friday. I'm going to go down with him. He's actually getting first pick, first choice out of the class. Uh, since we're local, they kind of take care of us. Um, so we're going to go down Friday, pick up the dog. Um, and then November 9th is when his canine training begins, and that's a six week class. So he'll be out of the schedule for six weeks. Tyler Denniston is coming along nicely. Obviously, he's still young and he's green. Um, he needs to learn a lot, but he's moving right along as, as expected. And then hopefully, we'll be able to. I, I really think we've got a good group of people that were. Uh, um, that are applying right now that have made it this far, and I'm confident we'll be able to get two out of this process. Um, in fact, we might have three or four good candidates. So we might actually have more than one to bring to the board of work so they can, they can interview. It would be nice for change. And that's all I have unless you have questions. On, on the list of um, crimes? Yes, sir. Just, I'm assuming when they when they get charged, they're they're charged with the most serious offense that you can charge them. Honestly, with. I go through. Or, I, I, on, as far as the monthly stats, I go through the log, and if they're charged with two or three things, depending on what they are, I might I might write all three of them down, depending. So the the five possessions of a syringe. Those are five different people. Is that a uh, is that a misdemeanor? Is that a... I don't, honestly, I don't know. And as bad as that is, they changed it because there was possession, possession of the syringe and then they told us that only applied to basically steroids. Um, so then we st stopped charging people but then they introduced a new, new legislation and with the criminal code reform, I can't even keep it straight right now. Instead of A, B, C, and D felony, there's six levels of felonies and I don't know what's what anymore. And I apologize for not knowing that. I'll find the answer out for you. Okay. But those are five individual people that were charged with illegal possession of a syringe. But it falls in one of those categories. It's either a misdemeanor. Uh, I would say either an A misdemeanor or a level six felony. I'm not sure it's one of those two. Now, do those syringes have to have drugs on them? Or, I mean, if they were diabetic, I mean. Obviously, what? you have to take the totality of the circumstances. Okay. If, it's, if they've got other. I'm going to guess um, all five of those people are have other charges listed here. Up and down here. The, the list? Yeah. yeah. They're going to have uh, some residue, drug residue, things like that. But yeah, we are seeing, again, we're, we're still seeing needles. Um, I hope we don't get to be where we consider it an epidemic, but one's bad enough. A low five in one month. Chief, I think they changed that to a level six value. Did they? Thank you. So, uh, what what does a diabetic do that does carry a syringe? Obviously, they're going to have. We'll be able to tell. Okay. Like I said, we take the totality of the circumstances. 
it's not legal possession. Mark, it's, legal possession. It's, part of, it's part of the criminal charge that it uh, um, be used for a controlled substance or an alleged drug. So, I mean, obviously, they're, they're, you couldn't support a criminal charge just by bare possession for a, for a diabetic. It just wouldn't work. Thank you. Refer to the expert. <coughs> Imagine the lawyer knowing. We that. just put him in jail. Yeah, he figures out the rest right. of it. <laughs> well, they just changed that uh, level six this past <laughs> legislation. Reports from committees. We have uh, Mark McCall's absent uh, vacation. Uh, Brian, do you have anything <coughs> for FEDCO? Yeah, FEDCO met October 8th. I know I was not present. I do have the minutes. What's that? Uh, reported checking account balance 54,831.59. Operating reserve balance 107,448.96. Um, Schnabel Tears hosting a one year anniversary party on the 31st. Um, is it Terry's that open to the public or is yep. that oh, yeah. um, if you were if you were a costume you get free wine tasting um, they've made the first Fulton County grown here and made here wine on our visual is now hiring so if you know anyone let them know and they just broke ground on a 12,000 square foot expansion um, but then that seems you know on the industrial front things are kind of slow I know they're pretty slow for us um, seems to be widespread uh, as far as the foundry and machine castings are, they've experienced slowdown. Um, November 12th, Terry, I just got the invite. There's um, starting to get local businesses together for some networking, which I commend you on. I think that's a great idea and I'm planning to attend. Okay, good. Uh, that'll be November 12th at the airport and the invitations are out. And that's really not much else going on. Is there anything you needed to add that wasn't there? Um, Team Pride is kind of into their facility at, at Carter Lumber. Uh, they had a, one of their, I mean, they're kind of a nationwide company now, just since I started working with them the last year or so. And they've got, uh, they had a, a meeting of sales reps and other technical people of 30 people in town um, for three days, week before last, to kind of have a, you know, come to you know same uh, sheet of paper in terms of where the company was going so they grew up pretty quickly and they're they're in at least their office part so um, the manufacturing piece so they're going to try to get moved over by the end of the year top industries is going up with their 115,000 square feet um, how did the job fair go with um, uh, yeah job fair with deans went i think there were seven or eight companies uh zentis was there and bay valley was there braun was there airvac was there um who else locally was there um i'm forgetting at least one that i was aware was there i talked to gary today he said 15 or so guys came in from deans they were pretty happy with what was available some of the companies were taking applications uh, some were saying come to our facility and put in an application. Some were saying connect online and put in an application. So there were companies there that were, were looking for people. So he, Gary said he felt good. He said some of the other guys felt good. He said uh, unfortunately, well he said that he, had, he was really happy with work one also. He's been taking a lot of their classes. Um, he said he didn't really want to have to do that, but uh, he was kind of uh, enjoying it. and. Uh, you know, taking some computer classes and stuff like that, and a couple guys were, a couple people over there were doing that. So um, he, he was pretty, he was pretty pleased with it. Uh, we're thinking about another one, possibly. So that not everybody's really looking yet, um, and we're thinking about another career job type uh, fair for those guys. So possibly in late November was, was his thought. Late November, December. So he was happy with it. Questions. I'm sure Terry can answer them. <laughs> we did.
did we did get the environmental clearance on a, on a property downtown that's going to uh, enable a small uh, business to, to get started uh, kind of a move in from from out of the area so to speak so we got the clearance on uh, phase one and phase two so the bank could move ahead with some lending on that so that's a uh, something that'll pop up downtown within the next uh, you know, period of time um, I guess that's probably it for that. That's uh, the dean's building is still probably going to be mid-November before they let anybody in to look at it, um, and probably late December, first of the year before it's actually available, you know, to backfill. So um, some time yet to work on that, but uh, we're in touch with the right people, and um, they know what we want to put a productive facility back into it as best we can. Uh, but we, I think there'll be a good amount of interest in the building that size with that amount of cooling space and the location and the community we're in. We'll get somebody serious about it pretty quickly, I think. Is there anything more on Hart Chapter and March? Um, you know, I, the, he has a new realtor, um, the owner does. Uh, it's, it's a boat storage business right now. I mean, I, I've, I've had some people kicking the tires on it. Uh, but everybody's kind of overwhelmed by the cost of, you know, yeah. reconfiguration or renovation on it. So, okay. um, so thanks for asking. Nothing right now. Uh, we we are kicking around the. I'm trying to make some connections on people that might be interested in the residential piece again. But you know, it's slow moving. Some barriers. No other questions. We'll move on to uh, Burns. You had a park board report. Yeah, they had a park board meeting. Ryan Lewis from the <coughs> county commissioner came in and uh, to the park board meeting, and uh, he has proposed uh, uh, to the park board that uh, they take on the Smith Building uh, property across the street from the uh, greenhouse, and um, they will deed that over to the city and it over to the park and uh, that ought to be interesting uh, with concession that they uh, uh, get a uh, dog park somewhere like right there next to sledding hill they have some property they haven't uh, done anything with and so the park board is considering this i don't know what uh, dog park is i have no idea i have a cat uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Uh, anyhow, uh, the pool's closed and uh, they've drained it. Uh, the water's been turned off. Uh, golf financing, uh, I'll get to that. Um, the golf report was uh, they're uh, 6000 down on season passes and 5000 down on uh, green fees. Uh, total somewhere around uh, ten to eleven thousand dollars off from what they were last year. Uh, all the golf courses are uh, having a tough time this year. Uh, they have got the credit card uh, machine uh, uh, and the computer system switched over, uh, according to Shada. I tossed that out. Uh, <laughs> she uh, has got them, I think, operating now. Uh, they couldn't uh, accept. Uh, uh, the uh, new chip card, but uh, I understand they can now. Correct. Uh, so they're back in business on that one. Uh, they had a request uh, uh, to uh, have a uh, bid on some rough mowers and vehicles and this kind of thing from uh, different companies. So they're pursuing that uh, for some material uh, mowers that they need to uh, replace. Uh, let's see, what else, uh, page two. Uh, uh, let's see, oh yeah, uh, they have, down in the city park, if you haven't been through it, they have all the pavilions uh, re-roofed, metal roofing, brown metal roofing, take a look at them, they did a tremendous job on that, someone did, uh, they're down to the last half of the last uh, uh, one there and 
they just have the furry strips on that last half. And uh, when they get that done, they'll be all right. I think uh, the uh, roof light was uh, had them stymied a little bit, uh, cutting that out, so they held up on it. Uh, outside of that, uh, they're doing some stump removal and uh, tree removal and, and uh, tree trimming on the park, uh, on the golf course itself, uh, which had to be done. They're still working on that storm <coughs> damage. Uh, they were fined, I thought I'd let you know, they were fined uh, $500 uh, for uh, someone serving a minor out there. They do serve beer. So they have put a policy in. Uh, you can't buy a beer out there unless you show your ID. I guess no matter how old you may be, that ought to be interesting. Uh, they're talking about uh, putting some uh, play equipment on the beach. Uh, they've done quite a bit of work and put some money in that beach again this year uh, with uh, pea gravel and this type of thing and, and uh, rocks and uh, something like they have in the JC Park. Nothing uh, extravagant, uh, maybe a slide and a couple swings uh, would help out there. And I think that would be a great great thing uh, maybe to help along the lake lakefront there. So that's, that's about the, the, the meeting. I guess I should ask the president. But about yeah. it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Speaking of uh, tree stumps, what about those stumps on Ewing there? Just the on what? the curb, those tree stumps on Ewing. Are they going to do anything with those? Where they cut off all those trees and stuff? From the storm? No, those were the ones that had the ash, ash borer. Ash ash board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, they're supposed to pull them out to get a little bit more punky to pull them out with a the loader. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the tree boards talk about planting new trees there too. Right. Okay. The tree board is the one that uh, even recommended that. And, uh, uh, Cut those down. Because I think they were all actually, I think they were all ash trees. Yeah, the yeah, they were. CNR, uh, <clears throat> recommended to the yeah. tree board to the park board to take them down. Thank you, Burns. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, uh, Terry Lee, do you have anything else? You're on an agenda here for uh, yeah. Rochester Redevelopment Commission. Yeah, um, I talked to you guys earlier about the potential acquisitions under Bicentennial Nature Trust and another project, so we're working on that. Uh, we did start some work on the extension of the Nickel Plate Trail between 9th and 12th. Um, got surveyor and some design engineer out right now, so I should have descriptions that we move forward with the easement on that pretty soon. Um, I want to give you a couple dates on the downtown planning grant uh, that the city applied for and got through Okra. Um, Office of Community and Rural Affairs. We're getting to the point of kind of getting those guys toward their draft recommendations. Um, November 6th, um, anybody that's on these committees that are invited, if I get the wrong date or time, please correct me. Um, November 6th at 11 a.m. Uh, I wanted to check and see if we could maybe use the area back here for these meetings to start them here. Um, uh, November 6th and invite the public to attend if they're interested. November 6th at 11 a.m. Um, Scott Bergens, uh, with SDG Strategic Development Group, he's uh, kind of the economic restructuring guy. Um, I think Cecil Penland, who is a uh, landscape architect uh, a guy, is, is going to be here that, at that meeting. And then also John Anderson from John Anderson will be here. He's looking for maybe a couple of um, you know key projects that might be identified and also looking pretty hard at potential residential projects in the downtown commercial area. So that's November 6th at 11. Um, November 10 at 1, November 10th at 1 p.m. Uh, this is really a meeting uh, regarding the structure of uh, the, the facade program that we're looking at rolling out in 16. So Pat Jacobs with Arc Trio uh, will be here and Rose uh, Wernicke. She's an independent history, architectural history, architectural history consultant. Uh, so those, uh, Rose and Pat will be here November 10th at 1 p.m. Um, and then November 19th, <clears throat> this is kind of the draft recommendations meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, four o'clock. Uh, pretty well, uh, several will be here from both uh, Strategic Development Group, Rundle Ernstberger Associates, Arc Trio, to kind of bring us the, 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 the draft recommendations for the downtown planning grant piece. So 
Um, any of these are open to whoever would like to attend, whether it's a board meeting or board members or property owners in the downtown area or councilmen or anybody else to kind of, you know, give your input and feedback on these things and see what, what we're working on. So I guess that's kind of it. Um, Terry, the meeting on the any sixth, questions? The meeting on the 6th, I have actually created a second meeting for the Rochester downtown uh, Main Street. Shea is coming in. Okay. What time is that? At 12.30. And so okay. I had thought that we were having the meeting at the chamber building, so I'd asked her to meet there. Okay. So we potentially change that one to the Okay, so on November 6th also we'll have Indiana Main Street, uh, uh, yeah. Shea Kamichikevich here yeah. to talk to us about uh, how we're working and with that yes, program. to update. Which is a key piece in staying aligned with the Office of Community and Rural Affairs. We have to be a Main Street recognized community and you guys know Amy Rowe is the director of that now. So that's kind of it for November. Um, who knows what December will bring. So any questions? Most likely, right? Terry, what time was the one on the 19th again? The 19th is at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Thank you. I, what I thought you said, but I just I think probably for all three of these, if we can meet here, um, based on the time, we might meet for a little while and then walk downtown and have lunch or something to keep walking, kind of move the group around. And, 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 and the same really for the other ones is kind of start here. And if it turns into sort of a walking tour, it might turn into a walking tour. So. If anyone's interested in joining us, then that's kind of right. what to expect. I and guess. we have enough space that if there's anybody that wants to continue any kind of smaller conversation, we've got a conference room that, you know, we can keep conversations going too. There you go. Uh, Thank you, Terry. <clears throat> you're not speaking, Kendra? I thought you were going to speak. <laughs> <laughs> She's running. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, moving right on down. Uh, Mark, do you have a uh, BCA Council of Aging anything going on there? I'm yes. sure there is. First, though, Burns, if you would lease or loan your cat to the dog to the park court, <laughs> the dog park would be a more exciting place. It would. <laughs> Maud would love that. <laughs> I think Maud would be bossing them around. <laughs> the BCA meets uh, tomorrow night with two things on the agenda. Uh, both of them are a little bit interesting, a little bit different. The uh, Cross Church wants to open uh, and operate Second Blessings out of a dwelling that's located at 107, 117 West 2nd Street. Uh, and, and this would be a place uh, gives away clothing to families in need and uh, they need a variance to do that out of out of the home and the other one is a little bit unusual most people come to the BZA for a variance these are people looking to uh, substantially remodel their home and, and need three variances one for a carport one for additional living room space and and one for the front of the house for just additional living space. So that's BZA tomorrow night. Uh, yesterday was Council on Aging and it was the uh, first meeting for the new director, Melissa Wetzel. Uh, typical uh, reports, but the spaghetti dinner was a uh, terrific success bringing in five hundred and seventy dollars and thirty nine cents uh, there are some folks working on increasing the number of activities that are at the senior uh, center their transportation units for the month of September 2015 3,697 um, and uh, I did go call bingo there earlier in the month and if you want a treat go call bingo at the senior center those, those folks don't cut you any slack 
keep moving. We got prizes to win. It's absolutely hilarious. I had a ball. So, and he questions us, my report. Thank you, Mark. Any questions? Okay, uh, Chase, do you have anything on solid waste or animal adoption? Yeah. Um, solid waste. Uh, the recycling center shipped 633 tons of recyclable with a value of $3,329. For the month of August 2015, the county line landfill received $21,575.01 tons of waste in 23 working days for a daily average of 938 tons. Fulton County accounted for 5,340 tons. The rest of Indiana contributed 16,232 tons and 1.71 tons from out of state. The host fee for the month was $25,687.88. Um, ended up approving a resolution um, for removing a few vendors that we no longer use and adding a few others. Um, we also ended up uh, purchasing a new trailer, um, a recycling trailer. Of $1,275. Um, information the county council had adopted our, our budget for 2016 and they finally given away all of the compost uh, that we had used or that we had. Um, just a little bit left that I think is we're going to kind of level off and try to remove some of the trash out of it. But other than that, that was it. And the animal shelter, there's really nothing, nothing to say about it. Thank you, Chase. Any questions? Not Tom Butler. Uh, EMA had a meeting. We didn't have a quorum, so uh, the meeting was closed. Uh, tree board. Met. I did miss the meeting, but I know they're still working on that grant process. And then the uh, EMS met. Uh, they had a couple of things. Um, the revenue for September was fifty-four thousand four hundred and forty-nine dollars and ninety-one cents. That brings them to a yearly of five hundred twenty-eight thousand ninety-two dollars and forty-one cents. Had a total of a hundred and eighty-one calls. 36 of them generated in Akron, 38 generated in Kiwana, and 107 were generated out of Rochester. Broken down by uh, towns and townships, Rochester, including the township of, was uh, 116 of those calls. Akron, 27, Kiwana, 20 or 12, Fulton, 6, Macy, 5, Culver, 4. Also, too, they are in the works with Lutheran to uh, have Lutheran take over the EMS service. Uh, there is a 10-year contract that they're working on. Everyone on the board should receive a, a copy of that. And just so common knowledge, they are interested in keeping the sites the same as they were with the um, county as well, so uh, they'll be addressing the board in a more formal manner here to come. There has been some information shared and gathered and, and the process is, is going. Uh, any more I can say on that or is that? I think I'd divert to Mark and let him. Well, um, as we all know, we're wanting to, the county wants to put the uh, EMS with through their hospital. So I guess uh, at our meeting, we did have a meeting today with uh, President Brian and uh, Chief Butler there, Marty, uh, not Marty, but uh, Andy was there and uh, shot a, We need to come up with uh, the whole thing if they want to make a transition to make it as easy as possible to take it over. And that means if we leave it at the fire station, we need to come up with a, um, a figure that we want to use for a contract to let them stay there. And if they stay at the hospital, 
if we decide we don't want to do it, we'd give them a, like 180 days, I think would be written up by the attorney that we'd uh, be able to get out of a contract over the next 10 years if something didn't work for the staying at the fire station. But we're also gonna get rent coming in for the fire station to stay there, just like we're doing now. And we get money coming back. If right now we get $40,000 credit on our low money that we give the county, for them staying there. So this is what we're gonna to have to um, come to a decision with the council to, uh, we'll have another meeting once we get some more documentation, uh, a special meeting that we'll call to uh, bring the council in before November 5th. Yeah. Maybe November 4th have a meeting. Yeah, we're with um, the city elections on Tuesday. Uh, that kind of poses a challenge and plus we've got um, some folks going on vacation the end of next week. So. Lutheran would like to have some kind of answer back to them by November 6th at the latest, so we're trying to figure what would be the best date to have a special council meeting. The goal is to have it up and running by the first of the year. Yes. So that's why November November 5th. Correct. So we would, if you guys can decide on what that date would look like for next week, if Monday works or Wednesday works or whatever, that we can get together to have just the conversation about this um, and would be great if we could come up with that tonight so I can advertise it in time. Are you talking about daytime or a nighttime meeting? It could be either or. Thought, well, I don't know. I mean, it could be either or, but it depends on who's available, you know. Well, Monday Monday evening before election is the Kiwanis Correct. turkey noodle dinner, so I That's would probably be not a good day. <laughs> so, it would have to be either the 4th or the 5th. Mm -hmm. Probably the 4th would be a Thursday, is that right? It would be a Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday. A Wednesday. Or the 5th. But the, I guess we can talk about it now, too. I mean, what's your feelings about leaving it at the fire station? I mean, is everybody have any disagreement with that? I mean, I think it's a good deal for us. Um, what we need to figure out, you know, when we set this up, 40 was the number with the county six years ago. Um, we really need to look hard and see what um, maintenance we're, we're seeing from the use of the, you know, the ambulance like one, top way out, you know, turn, you know, they're going in and out of there a lot more than the fire trucks are, so they're turning on the asphalt to back in, so that, you know, that's a con something to consider. Um, we can pretty much break down, you know, utility utilization, you know, it's, it's kind of shared um, we do have a breakdown of the, the areas that they're going to be using. Um, so is 40 enough? Do we need to up that? Um, and one other thing pointed out is 10 years is a long time. Do we need to maybe say, okay, we'll go 40, 42, whatever for five years. Then we want to reevaluate and make sure we're getting our, you know, everything covered and it's not hurting us. You know, that those are the things we need to have decided before we go. And then the other thing we need to discuss is with the county on, you know, the first three years, they want 200,000 put in, how much are we contributing to that? You know, that's another thing that we need to have an answer to. Which that's a separate issue from Luther, and that's with the county and their local agreement. Right, but, I, right? That, that, but that'd have to all be worked in. That would it. also, I think, play a factor in, right. in our, our dollar amount from right. Lutheran. Uh, will we get any more of that low at the front of it back? We'll get all our low of money back after three years. After three after years, years. Uh, Lutheran wants $200,000 for the first three years to upgrade the equipment. Ambulances, equipment, everything. Yeah, because it's been neglected because of the trying to pay the salary it. over the first. And we've been doing this for about six years, I believe it is, that we started this with the county. So we're now at the point where, you know, we're just trying to get to be in the black. So it's a good, Win-win. Personally, I feel if Luther comes in and operates it, and that'll free us up after three years. And what percentage we give back to the county for that two hundred thousand is what we got to figure out. We get the low up money by per capita. So Rochester, the last census had what sixty-two eighteen, and the county is twenty thousand. Twenty-one. Yeah. Twenty-one, roughly. So, you know, the percentage of the lowest should be the percentage of the lowest, but yet. Is it the ambulance calls they want to try to look at? We don't. We need to discuss that with the county and see what we give back to them out of our low money. And then the total low we get is like two hundred and 
No, this year is about three hundred, just over okay. three hundred thousand. It's gradually been increasing. Okay. Now, I will follow that up to say that probably over the next few years, um, it's going to go down. It's going to go down again. Partially because, because of be, yes, because different of, jobs have left. Correct. So uh, it's local option income tax, and it, it does have to be spent on either police, fire, or EMS. So if we get just say pick out three hundred thousand, you know we're going to get for the next three years whatever less we get back to the county for that two hundred thousand. And then after three years to seven years, we get all of it to help offset the general budget for fire and police. Hmm. And like I said, the EMS generated last year in two thousand fourteen six hundred fifty eight thousand fourteen dollars and seventy five cents. So then that that will then be turned over. Luther will generate this. Um, of course, and, and, and then plus the 200 and anything else offset, which is they're, they're operating on a 1.27 uh, million dollar budget for, for this year. So Lutheran is going to make up the difference, but they're going to use the additional money. Uh, she said, like I said, the monitors are in desperate need of, of upgrading. Uh, I think they've got one ambulance that they're waiting that was involved in an accident. They're waiting on a, on a strike cot. I think that delay is actually on the manufacturer of the cop. And, there are some needs. Uh, some of the ambulances, even though they've rotated them fairly recently, uh, have high mileages on them. So we're looking at turning those around. And look, like I said, Lutheran has the does have a, a bigger buying power. So their their supplies and, and the, the major equipment items won't be as expensive for them to outfit as it would be for the county to purchase. Personnel and, and equipment is taking up more space than it originally did, too. Right, right. Correct. Yeah, They're originally. actually taking one whole bay and then they have part yeah. in the uh, basement for storage and then also right. they use the whole commons, too. So, I mean, it's all, I mean, we have three full time firemen there usually, or three firemen yeah. there and they have two EMS there. So, you, you're well, looking in, in the director's <coughs> office. So, they, they have three as, as well right. most of the time. And of course, then uh, anytime uh, they have a run of either Kiwana or Akron. They are stopping for resupplies when they have a, a meeting though they come in and they do utilize uh, their laundry details and some other things at Rochester including the satellite stations will come in and utilize the station for that any training exercise or anything they do is is based in out of Rochester and they utilize the classroom um, when available and the 10 years is because the county doesn't want to get it back that's why they want to contract 10 years that's right. And they didn't want to go with three years, and then have them decide that you know the county wanted to go back. And the county would be with a black eye to reinvest and everything. They do have a, the county does have a buyout option it, if if it isn't working correctly. Um, they can't do it. I don't I don't think they'll be able to. But the, they do have the that market option. value of the equipment. The yeah, they, they'll yeah. be able to buy it back. And that's what the whole low was set up for ten years ago eight years ago well it started before my tenure of mayor so they talked about the low to start this back then and it's another tool for the cities as well for the future because our tax base keeps getting smaller and smaller too i mean we still get taxes but expenses go up and this is a tool that we can use for the fire and safety in the future for the general fund and i will say that the actual i had contacted tom luther and called yesterday to set up the appointment uh, one of the tasks that Krista had tasked me with you. They were kind of looking for the, the actual dedicated square footage. So I called Chief Butler and said, can you by chance get me some numbers so we have something to talk about. The, the total dedicated square footage that EMS currently uses at the fire station is 1,938 square feet. So that includes the Bay Area, their, the bedrooms, uh, their office space does not include any of the common space. Uh, they have downtown, they have downstairs basement secure storage. Mm -hmm. uh, they do add, utilize some storage additionally in the bay as well as uh, initially it was supposed to be one ambulance, now that they parked two ambulances yeah. there. Um, so, but, the, but overall, I mean, we're talking almost 2,000 square foot, like you said, Burns, that as their operation has changed, and yeah. they've, they've increased their, their footprint, um, obviously for necessary reasons, but so that's what we're looking at, and I did, I did reach out to Councilman Garrett. Uh, just to, I talked to Mark yesterday and said, would it be who? Because I'm not familiar enough with commercial rental space, and said, you know, what are what kind of things should we be looking at? And when in speaking with Attorney Perkins as well, 
you know, what, what kinds of things should we be looking at to make sure that we're doing this? And then uh, when Lutheran came in, one of the things we cannot do is, is they cannot uh, enter into a, a lease agreement, so it'll have to be a contractual agreement with them. And we just need to make sure that we have all, you know, they're protected, we're protected, uh, and everybody in the end is satisfied with that dollar figure. Whatever that may be, whether it's 40,000, 45, 50, you know, whatever, nobody really seems to have a, a good feel, and that's why the council, I think, when Mark and I spoke, it was we just feel like we need to have everybody have a say in where they feel that comfort level is. Right. So we and have think, a good public private partnership with them. Right, right. And the, and the other thing, they're, look, they're looking for a partnership. So if we go in and we say, well, we want $200,000 a year from you, I and mean, that's basically telling them we don't want them here. So that's another thing to be. You know, keep in, keep in your mind when you're thinking about a figure. And what's the best for the citizens of Rochester? You know, Correct. we we want an ambulance located in Rochester. Right. We don't want them to go out and build in the country, and not provide the service for the city of Rochester. Also, and and we don't want to get in the ambulance business as well. <laughs> you know, through and Lutheran taxpayers. wants to be part of us. They really want to be here with us. Uh, was my kind of take from what she said is they're really wanting this partnership so well, yeah it's beneficial to have what's already existing mm -hmm. you know, they don't have to go out and scout other properties and build or find another place to rent so I think we have a starting point right now with our current agreement uh, one of the things I did I, I always look at things monthly um, and when I broke down the 40,000 per month it ends up being the 333 for infinity you gotta love those 333 infinity numbers. So um, I just threw out, let's make it a, a round number and you know, starting point of, if we look at 3,500 a month, that equates to 42,000 a year. You know, does Lutheran feel that's fair? Do we feel that's fair? Um, you know, that's, that's the conversation that I think they're wanting you guys to have to come back to them by next week. And we can, like I said, we can, table it until we have our other two council members here if you feel comfortable with that or if you feel comfortable one thing forward the, the one thing that's uh, we don't have the crystal ball is on uh, utilities Correct. I mean what what are the utilities naturally in history what are they going up or well and that's hard to uh, tell because our cause fire station usage. was yeah our fire station was only in place for a, not quite the full two years before EMS before the agreement and they moved in or maybe just over right around that no I'm just saying what what is uh, NIPS, yeah, what's NIPSA going up in, uh, the, the cost current the cost right yeah. now current cost rate how much are they going up percentage wise what they charge um, Duke Energy the water bill goes up I know sometimes with sewage which the water is not much not, right. well you no pun intended but I mean you still use water <laughs> but I mean yeah. you know but what I'm saying is this what do you want to compare back to that's the yeah. challenge because we can give the problem we have is most of our usage that we've had since this has been implemented has been with the two entities combined we don't have much right. data prior but i'm to just that. saying what how much does uh, nipsco go up every year one percent two percent i mean whether whether they're there or not the, yeah. the thermostat's going to be set at a right. certain there's no right. zone and referral i don't know what duke's going up not. Not. i mean but yeah I, and i don't know that we would have I mean, we could try to, to come up with something but i just that's what i'm saying i'm just that's one of those numbers i'm just not sure we can how well we can disseminate that right. because we don't have any past history and a lot of it's going to be goodwill to at least get something back for the use of mm -hmm. the facility we're going to have the facility there period you know the firehouse so I mean, if we can work it out and keep the ambulance there i think it's a win-win and hopefully it'll be managed better by the owners of lutheran because they're in the business i think that's a lot that i give the credit to the council uh, the commissioners for starting all this and taking it on but it's time to let Lutheran take it if they're here and willing to take it over. Because I don't think Rochester wants to get in the ambulance business. We're not a big enough city to offset that. And if I need an ambulance, I want I want one. I won't wait another 15 minutes. So, when can we have a meeting, you think? You know what? I'm sorry. When could we get together? Wednesday, the fourth or the fifth, or maybe the fourth. Fourth Wednesday would probably be good. Marty, can you after hours? Okay. Five o'clock. If we're talking about five o'clock, that's fine. Yeah. Let's do it at five o'clock on uh, Wednesday. 
Is that alright with everybody? Meeting Wednesday. Is McCall going to be back by then? Yes, he should be. He'll be back this weekend. What's the date? That's November, November 4th. 4th. November 4th. Now give everybody time to hash it over. And, and I will get the documents it. out as well. What's that? I'll get the the notice out. Notice out. Well, and the documents from Lutheran. Okay. As well as the breakdown of the square footage and all of that stuff. I'll include all of that in that document. Fourth at five o'clock here at City Hall. Well, council. Okay, let's move to. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> on unfinished business, this will actually can't this go under the uh, ordinance as we're talking about the ordinance of uh, Commons yes. Council. Yeah, you can include that. Yeah. We, Carolyn just wanted to vote. Actually. On. Uh, my copy didn't turn out very well. Did you get a good copy of the uh, ordinance on the salary? 12, 2015. 12, 20, 12, 2015. Salary ordinance. My printer didn't print out six so pages well. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to jump down to the ordinance real quick, the noise ordinance, since we're talking about the uh, unfinished business. We propose that our meeting to give full-time uh, workers a, a raise at a, a dollar an hour and we do, we have a spread on the uh, part-time up to what's our part-time up to 13 dollars an hour highest, correct so some of the part-time we figured 50 cents an hour rather than a dollar but the full-time part -time, we have full-time part-time maybe a handful of people that work for the city street department we figured that since at that figure, give them the dollar an hour as well as the full time. They don't get the benefits, but they can only work 29, 30 hours Correct. because of the Obama factor of health care for providing insurance if you work for that. So everybody else, we want to clarify it that uh, part time people would get uh, 50 cents an hour for next year as a raise. Or up to, because some, some departments may not want to go quite that high. So we We'll give them that latitude. They can go back to 50 cents. So and we leave that up to the department head. Hmm? That's left up to the department head. I, yeah, or the parks the, department. Par parks department is the biggest, the most challenge because yeah. they um, don't have the largest budget. So that way, it gives them latitude if they want to do a quarter, 30 cents, whatever fits within their budget. So this was all passed, other than for our budget. But this is right. the ordinance to, for the salary. Ordinance. Correct. We've already sent it in. It was just clarification on the part-time helpers. Yeah. Okay. Part-time workers. And for payroll, like I said, it's just it's we just needed to clarify that for payroll purposes. So. So. You have uh, ordinance number twelve twenty-five. I will entertain a motion to read it by title only the first time. So moved. Second. All in favor. Okay. Ordinance number 12-2015, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2016. Okay. How many pages is this? Six. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion from a council member to read it, however they decide on the motion. Second reading. What's well, going to be published in the paper is a nice shot. It does not need to be anymore. I'm sorry? It does not need to be anymore. No. The only salaries, they've You're changed really that not requirement. Me out here. Hmm? You're I'm really sorry, not Brian. Me out here. They got a copy of it. How's that? <laughs> I make a motion to suspend the rules and read ordinance 12 2015, the second reading by title only. Second. All in favor? Ordinance number 12-2015, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2016. Well, since you're such a good reader, I know that uh, we're here also with Channel 4. I would entertain a motion to 
motion to read it in its entirety. So moved. Second. Second. You're welcome. All in favor? He was the bad guy, not me. Sorry, Brian. Got your camera face on. I don't have the camera face. That's <clears throat> Who seconded that motion? I'm sorry. Mark. Thank you. Ordinance number 12-2015, an ordinance fixing the salaries for the employees of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year 2016. To the Common Council of the City of Rochester, Indiana, I, the undersigned Mark L. Smiley, Mayor of the City of Rochester, is required by IC 36-4-7-2 and IC 36-8-3-3, hereby fix the salary and pay for employees of the City of Rochester beginning January 1, 2014. This is not correct. <laughs> yeah. What was it? 2014. 2014. Did I miss a date? I did miss a date. It should be 16. Uh, <clears throat> 16. 16. Beginning January 1, 2016, and continuing thereafter until duly changed and request that such salary rates be approved by this council. City Attorney, 7,500 paid from the general fund, 3,750 paid from waste water fund, and 3,750 paid from the water funds for a total of 15,000. He or she may also be paid additional compensation for services performed beyond the normal day-to-day -day functions. Board of Public Works and Safety. Three members, two are appointed by the mayor and the mayor and clerk treasurer as secretary receive an annual compensation of 5,054 paid from the general fund. Police Department. Chief, 52,000 annually. Lieutenant, 50,500 annually. Sergeant, 49,000 annually. Corporal, 47,500 annually. First class patrolman, 46,000 annually. Probationary patrolman, 35,000 annually. Training officer, four, 1,000 annually. Specialty certification, uh, K-9, FTO, CSI, max of one bonus, $750 annually. Secretary, receptionist, dispatch, office manager, $7.25 up to $16.85 per hour. School crossing guard, one, for 40 weeks or that school is in session, $94. Special detail, $24.10 per hour. Fire department, chief, 52,000 annually. Assistant chief, 50,500 annually. Captain, 49,000 annually. Lieutenant slash investigator, 47,500 annually. First class fireman, 46,000 annually. Probationary fireman, 35,000 annually. Volunteer fireman, $15 per run. Volunteer fireman per 12-hour shift worked, $45. Volunteer fireman clothing allowance, $100 annually. Volunteer fireman car allowance, $100 annually. EMT, three, $800 annually. Safety officers, two, $750 annually. Longevity pay, all full-time employees. All full-time employees are to receive longevity pay in addition to regular salary. After three years of service, employees would receive $300. For every year worked after the three years, the longevity pay would be increased by $100 to a maximum of $2,000 with 20 years service. The employer would receive the longevity pay the first pay period after anniversary date, less taxes. Operations Manager. Operations Manager, $56,366 annually. 14,091.50 to be paid from the street department fund, $14,091.50 to be paid from the water department fund, and $28,183 to be paid from the wastewater department fund. Street department, department foreman, $48,616 annually, $43,616 to be paid from the motor vehicle highway fund, and $5,000 to be paid from the park operating fund for serving as park foreman. Park operating fund. Golf Pro slash manager, $46,151 annually. Swimming pool director, $10,000 annually. Swimming pool assistant director, $5,000 annually. Golf maintenance director slash mechanic, up to $13 per hour. Summer park program director, up to $1,530 annually. Summer park program assistant, assistant director, up to $1,530 annually. Park foreman, $5,000 annually. Water department, department foreman, $48,616 annually. On-call policy is in effect for department foreman and plant operators slash employees. 
wastewater department. Department foreman, $43,120 annually. On-call policy is in effect for plant operator slash employees as set by supervisor. General labor, no less than minimum wage and no more than $20 per hour for full-time positions. No less than minimum wage and no more than $13.50 per hour for part-time positions. Base pay, the base rate for all full-time employees will be $10.50 per hour after completion of the 90-day probationary period. All new full-time employees of the street department not holding a valid Indiana commercial driver's license Clerk Treasurer's Department, Police Department Clerical, Parks Department, Wastewater Clerical, and Water Department Clerical will start at the hourly rate of $10 per hour and remain at that rate for the probationary period of 90 calendar days. The wages for these employees will automatically increase at the rate of $0.50 cents per hour per year until completion of the three-year progressive orientation period beginning in calendar year 2015. Note, the progressive orientation program began with employees hired in the calendar year 2000. All new part-time employees will start at no less than current federal minimum wage and no more than $9 per hour and will remain at that rate. Rate increases are subject to approval. New part-time employees for the street department holding a valid Indiana commercial driver's license are exempt from this clause, see below. <coughs> Beginning in 2014... 2016. Actually, no, just strike that whole statement. That was from last year because it was implemented. Strike the whole. Just, just strike just the day. beginning 2014. Okay. Um, the signed copy I took. Okay. The base rate for street department employees that hold a valid Indiana commercial driver's license will be $12 per hour after completion of the 90-day probationary period. Street department employees holding a valid Indiana commercial driver's license will start at $11.50 per hour and remain at that rate until the completion of the 90-day probationary period of 90 calendar days. Certification slash endorsements. Employees of the water and wastewater department receiving state certification will receive a $1.50 increase in their hourly rate for the first certification and a $0.25 cent per hour increase for each additional certification up to the level of certification required by the city plans. Employees of the street department receiving Indiana issued commercial driver's license will receive a $1.50 cent increase in their hourly rate. Now be it ordained by the Common Council for the City of Rochester, Indiana, Section 1, that from and after the first day of January 2016, the salary and pay schedule for employees of the City of Rochester, Indiana, be as stated above. Section 2, that from and after the first day of January 2016, the following benefits will be in effect. A, vacations. Annual vacation benefits begin reset on January 1st of each calendar year. The vacation schedule for regular full-time city employees is as follows. <coughs> Newly hired full-time employees will earn eight hours of vacation time per quarter of employment during the first year of employment, 40 hours after the first full year of employment, 80 hours after the second through fifth year of employment, 120 hours for the sixth through the 15th year of employment, 160 hours for the 16th year through remaining years. Vacation time may not accumulate from year to year unless expressly approved by the Board of Public Works and Safety in writing. Full-time slash part-time police clerical position will receive half-time of normal vacation schedule. <clears throat> B, insurance. Hospitalization, life and disability insurance, and vision care are available to each full-time employee with the city paying up to $850 of the premium each month. In the event the employee elects the family plan, the city shall pay up to $900 of the premium each month. The employee must enter the city group plan if he or she wishes to participate no later than one month after employment. The employment must pay, the employee must pay $1 per year and any remainder of the monthly premium. C, clothing allowance. Police, police officers, $1,100 per year. Police Department Full-Time Clerical Dispatch $400 per year. Police Department Part-Time Clerical Dispatch $200 per year. Firefighters $1,100 per year. All other employees who are required to wear a uniform provided by the city. D. Pension Plan. The city provides a pension plan for full-time employees hired in a covered position. Participation shall take place as soon as employment begins. <clears throat> e. Holiday. All full-time employees may have paid time off or no more than 14 holidays per year. Hourly employees will be paid straight pay for up to eight hours if the holiday is taken off or they will be paid time and a half for hours worked on a holiday. This does not include police or firemen. 
the police and firemen, except for the police chief and fire chief, will be paid $210 for each holiday worked. Police clerical who is not scheduled to work a holiday will receive straight time pay for the holiday. Full time slash part time police clerical position will receive half holiday schedule pay for holidays worked. The following are recommended are recommended holidays. New Year's Day, Good Friday, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, Martin Luther King Day, Memorial Day, Columbus Day, Day After Thanksgiving, Employee's Birthday, President's Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, Christmas Eve Day, City General Election Day. If the holiday falls on Saturday, the Friday before the holiday will be taken off. If the holiday falls on Sunday, with the exception of Easter, the Monday after the holiday will be taken. <clears throat> F, Police and Fire Pay. Firefighters, except for the chief, will receive compensation for any hours worked over 212 in a 28-day work period, as pursuant to the Fair Labor Standards Act, by receiving comp time at time and a half off or by receiving additional pay. Administrative officers are exempt. Police officers, except for the chief, will receive compensation for any hours worked over 80 in a 14-day work period, as pursuant to the Fair Labor Standard Act. By receiving additional pay or comp time, a time, a time and a half off, maximum hours for police hours per work period is 80 hours. Comp time cannot accumulate over 320 hours worked. G, overtime. All employees except elected officials and administrative personnel will be paid time and a half for hours worked in excess of 40 hours per week. A work week, week runs from Monday through Sunday when vacations, holidays, or personal time off days are taken in a work period, the hours an employee would have worked will be added to hours actually worked to help determine if overtime pay should be granted. Nothing in this ordinance shall prevent <coughs> a department head from receiving overtime for which he or she is otherwise qualified if the same is funded through a federal, state, or private grant and not through city funds. H, sick pay. Full-time employees may earn a maximum of five days wages for a major illness or injury each calendar year. Sick days may accumulate from one calendar year to the next calendar year to a maximum of 45 days. At the time of adoption of this policy, any employee having more than 45 days shall be grandfathered and credited with all earned sick days over the 45-day cap. Employees must provide medical documentation after three consecutive sick days from his or her doctor and every 30 days thereafter at the discretion of the department head. Medical verification may be required more frequently for suspected abuse of the sick leave policy. I, personal days. Two personal days per year may be paid each full-time employee for time taken off upon approval by the department head and notification to the clerk treasurer. <clears throat> J, golf and pool passes. Full-time employees, elected officials, waste board members, board of public works and safety members and park board members may receive swimming pool and or golf course membership for his or her immediate family for the value of these passes will be added to W-2 as additional compensation and subject to all payroll taxes. These wages do not affect pension contributions. Immediate family is defined to mean spouse and unemancipated children or dependents. Pass is valid for seasonal employees only while employed. This excludes summer park program employees, no refunds. K, funeral benefits. Funeral benefits for members of the old police and old fire pension funds shall be $12,000. Full-time employees of the city of Rochester may receive up to three days paid bereavement time for the death in his or her immediate family. Immediate family is defined as spouse, child, grandchild, mother, father, grandparents, brother, sister, mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law, and brother-in-law, or other family member living in the same household as the employee. L, wellness program. Effective April 1, 2014, the City of Rochester Board of Public Works and Safety approved a wellness fitness program for all full-time employees. These employees will have a choice of either declining or enrolling in the program. This program is designed to encourage all full-time employees to take an active approach to improving their health. Employees will have a choice of either joining the Fulton County Wellness Center or Soria Strength and Fitness. Both facilities are located in Ro within Rochester. The table below demonstrates the cost structure and monthly fees. Number of workouts required per month. Eight or more, city share 100%, employee share 0%. Five to seven visits, 50% city share, employee share, 50%. Less than five visits per month, city share, 0%, employee share, 100%. Enrollment fee, city share, 100%, employee share, 0%.
To join Fulton County Wellness Center, monthly fee is $37 with a one-time enrollment fee of $64 for new enrollees paid by the city. All employees that sign up with Fulton County Wellness Center will be signing a one-year contract with the Fulton County Wellness Center. Any employee that quits or is terminated will still be required to fulfill their contract with the Fulton County Wellness Center and will be responsible for paying the monthly fee until the end of the contract. To join Soria Strength and Fitness, monthly fee is $25 with no enrollment fee. Section 3 of this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its approval by the mayor. <clears throat> Thank you. Well done. The only other thing I would uh, mention that on the uh, ghoul, ghoul, golf and pool passes, uh, you mentioned waste board members, and that's water board members, because the waste board members is the board of works. So just to clarify that. Other uh, than did I say waste? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I do have a correction, and I, I totally missed it. The city attorney, that is actually, should be $9,000 paid from the general fund, $4,500 paid from wastewater, and $4,500 from water for a total of $18,000. I totally overlooked that entire section. How did you catch that? Um, <laughs> I didn't actually catch it. Yeah. I, I actually caught it. I looked at it and I said, that doesn't look right. <laughs> so where, where are we at on uh, The very the... front page, second paragraph. Oh, okay. This all turn around. Yeah. Should we okay, read it all so again with the corrections? So, you please? so it's <laughs> 9,500. <laughs> 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 the figure is 9,500? No, the retainer is 18,000 total. total. Okay, yeah. total. And then 9,000, half of it comes from the general fund, and then a quarter of it. Okay, 9,045.45. Correct. 100. Yes, and then 18,000 total. So. Are you going to make those changes? Well, the back page can just still be signed. And just type yes, I'll, yes, I'll correct the clean copy. Okay. Move for the passage of ordinance 2012. <laughs> 2015 as amended or banned or corrected. Second that. <laughs> okay. Do we have enough to pass all three readings tonight with five board members if everybody's agreeable? Yep. We have to have a quorum yep. of five. It depends on how many vote against it, but yes. Okay. Yep. You made the motion. Who seconded? Okay. All in favor? Yes. Okay. So it passed with five votes. Okay. Burns is ready. <laughs> okay. Um, we have an ordinance here, which I'm not totally aware of. What's the noise ordinance for horn honking? I will let Andy. I will divert to him. That actually began uh, um, as a uh, request in the, the council on uh, aging uh, because of. Uh, their need to use a horn to signal uh, their arrival in public transportation issues. So we discussed that some at the last meeting, uh, and uh, council wanted to see a version of a noise ordinance that would modify it to create an exception for uh, horns or signaling devices for uh, public transportation, school buses, they don't generally need them for school buses uh, or public safety vehicles. I think the other two are just just in case some signaling might be needed. But but I think the main thrust behind it was the, the public transportation and their need to, to use signaling devices. Horns. Wasn't there something in there about the, the decimals or something of that? There was something before. Okay. There, there's another subsection, but I don't. I, I, I just think that this subsection accomplished what we were saying. I don't remember last month discussing uh, adjusting the particular decimal level. Okay. I, I, I think what he's referring to isn't that the original ordinance or something about the decimal level. Something about measuring. It, I, it, it might level. still but it might be. We have an ordinance uh, before the one. I think I, I know what you're talking. I think that's why Andy's looking it up because I, I remember he, we had a conversation about another noise issue right. previously, and I remember mm -hmm. there were conversations about decibel levels. Yeah, I'm, I'm loud mufflers. Loud, yeah, because I mean you can have uh, loud mufflers can range in decibel levels from. Yeah, they were complaining about mm -hmm. the decibel levels of this and so on. The way it currently reads. Uh, Assuming this is this still updated, um, neither the nuisance ordinance or the noise ordinance have a particular decibel uh, uh, amount. So maybe we, maybe 
that got removed. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like that's been modified since 97. So it's not in there now. So, Chief Shots, have you seen this? The ordinance? Is that the new one? The new one? No, I haven't. I mean, what am I missing? What are we trying to prove here? Does it have an alarm go off? Or no, it's adding this no. excluding public safety. Oh, yeah, just excluding it. Yeah. 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 So From the ordinance. They're right. allowed to honk their horn oh, okay. to pick up their rights. So we're just amending that so they can do that. Right. Yeah. Did such a nice job. You want to do my title only, or uh, that's a short one. Matter to me. We can do it three times. Let's uh, make a motion to read ordinance number 11-25 team by title only. Second. Paul Payer. Ordinance number 11-2015, an ordinance regarding nuisances. It's open to interpretation, isn't it? <laughs> I'll entertain a uh, motion to uh, second reading of ordinance number 11 days 2015. I'll move to read by title only. Second then. All in favor? Ordinance number 11 days 2015, an ordinance regarding nuisances. Okay, I'll uh, entertain a motion probably to read it in its entirety since it's a short one again. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 11-2015, an ordinance regarding nuisances. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that a portion of the city's ordinance involving nuisances by a horn or signaling device should be modified to prevent an exception for certain classes of vehicles. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester, state, state statute 94.01 of the Code of Ordinance for the City of Rochester. No, that's not right. The City of Rochester defining nuisances is hereby modified to add certain language as indicated by bold text. A. The sounding of any horn, signal, device, or attachments on automobiles, motorcycles, bicycle, truck, bus, or other vehicle except as necessary for warning of danger to person or property. However, this subsection shall not apply to public transportation vehicles, school buses, or public safety vehicles. Okay, I'll entertain a uh, passage of uh, ordinance 11-2015 for noise and amend the horn hall themes. So moved. Pick. Pick whoever you want. Second. Okay. Second. Marty second. Got All it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, we have... Uh, are you passing around the uh, ones for the salary as well as sign or yes. sure. yeah. Okay, we have ordinance number 13-2015, which is a separate salary for elected officials. I will entertain a motion to have the first reading by title only. So moved. We have a second. Second. All in favor. Okay. Ordinance 13-2015, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the City of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2016, as approved by IC 36-4-7-2. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for the reading, second reading of the ordinance 13-2015, by title only, for 2016 elected official salary. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Ordinance 13-2015, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the City of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2016 as approved by IC 36-4-7-2. Okay, I'll entertain a reading in its entirety since it's a short one and you're doing such a great job for 2016 elected officials. So I moved. I make Second. <laughs> all in favor? Ordinance 13-2015, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all elected officials of the City of Rochester, Indiana, payable for 2016, as approved by IC 36-4-7-2, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester, Indiana, Section 1, that the annual salaries of the Mayor, Clerk Treasurer, and each member of the Common Council, effective January 1, 2016, shall be in the following amount. 
Mayor, general fund, $27,967. This includes Board of Works. Water fund, $9,498. Sewage fund, $15,303 for a total of $52,768. Clerk treasurer, $20,944. This also includes Board of Works. Water fund, $15,707. Sewage fund, $15,707 for a total of $52,358. Council, general fund, $2,320. Water fund, $840. Sewage fund, $840 for a total of $3,500. Brian, there's a correction. That should be $4,000. I know. What are you doing? I apparently printed things before I proofread them. I will admit so my then mistake. So what's, what's the breakdown? That, the breakdown is correct. Breakdown I just correct. didn't change the total. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Section 2. This ordinance shall be in full force from and after its passage and shall be effective as of January 1, 2016. Thank you, Brian. I will uh, move for the passage of ordinance 2013 uh, 15 as amended. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, do uh, I'll uh, entertain. All favor. What's that? All in favor? Five zero passes. Okay, uh, does anybody have any new business? And uh, legal department, Andy, did, I skipped over that. Did you have anything to bring? I did not have anything. Okay. Um, ADA concerns, was there any ADA concerns today? Any public comment? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, oh yes, go ahead. We've been having trouble in our neighborhood with uh, one household sending off fireworks, and I thought fireworks were only allowed a few days after Fourth of July. Did you call it into the police department? All the time. Um, doesn't the ordinance just say New Year's Eve and? Fourth of July, or is it? I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but uh, yeah. I guess a week prior to the week after the fourth, and then certain holidays, um, New Year's. Yeah. I'll talk to you. What's the address? Ten Ten Monroe Street. Is that your address or the? No, that's uh, their address. I'm nine thirty Monroe Street. That's the perpetrators. <laughs> Chief will check that out. I will. I'll see what I can do. There is an ordinance yes. for yes. that. I know there is. So an there's state statute. And the state statute. Okay. Oh. Uh, anything else? Thanks for sitting for a long, through a long meeting just for that opportunity. Out unless you attend. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will, uh, unless we want to call in some pizza, I'll uh, entertain a motion. <laughs> I'm in for the pizza. Yeah. So I haven't eaten yet. Yeah. Okay, remember.